Beautiful. Hey, good morning, everybody. Chad Timmer here from the Outdoorsman Sports Shop in Grand Rapids, Michigan, with a beautiful Sault Ste. Marie, St. Mary's River, Lake George. We got some big fish to show you here from the greater Sault Ste. Marie area. Stay tuned. So we're here on Lake George while Chad fights this behemoth. <laughs> it's been a battle getting out here, guys. <laughs> and we are working a main river channel and Chad is putting the hurt to me on these. Oh, this is a big one. We've lost, we lost one big one early. And uh, there so there's there's another one with it too. Another one with it. Oh yeah, you're right. What's going on here, little dude? There he is. Well, unfortunately, he's not a little dude is what the problem is. No, oh, there we go. <laughs> That's a tournament fish, Jed. Yep, those are the ones you're looking for right there. Yep. Especially because they all have big old bellies. When I came up here fishing before, I was using a, the big Z2 trying to sort through fish. So we're starting this morning. I got a baby Z2 just imitating the bait fish that are out here. And uh, they just cannot help it. If you get it in front of them, it's a guaranteed fish. Drop shotting, shot. nose yeah. hooked, and big old St. Mary's smallmouth. You know, a lot of people look at these fish, Chad, and, and they think, well, you're at St. Mary's River, why aren't you walleye fishing? I'll tell you why. You can have literal 50, 60, 70 fish days up here, can't you? Easy. Nobody is fishing these fish. They're all up here walleye fishing, pink salmon fishing, and you know what? Those are great, great things to do. But you know what? The smallmouth bass on the St. Mary's River is the, in my opinion, the absolute nobody knows about it fishery. It's a total secret and uh, we're kind of giving it away. <laughs> Which is perfectly fine. I'm going to keep casting. Oh, I got another one on already. <laughs> oh my gosh. Perfect. Uh, oh yeah, these fish don't know what's going on out here. <laughs> they come out of the water three feet. It's just nuts. Yeah, we found them. Oh my God. Yeah, they what's literally. What's happened is here today, this morning, is that we're on, oh my yeah, that's goodness, a good fish that's right a really good fish. Yep. Show that one off. Oh, look at the way you hit that thing, yep. right the way they want, yep. right in the roof of the mouth. You ain't gonna get away with that guy. Hooked right in the top of the mouth. And you're just twitching this, and we're up on a flat. We're not even in the deep channel right now, right Chad? Yeah, we're in four foot of water. Big old belly on them. Not even that long, but he's over three pounds. All right, you go back and grow. That's one nice thing. I'm actually getting more use out of live scope sometimes by knowing how close I am to an edge. So I always know, I wanna see it. As long as I'm there, I know I'm kinda, of, I'm pretty close to it. And I'm getting as much value out of just seeing fish and catching them as knowing where I'm located at close to a waypoint um, based on the contours that I can see on live scope. And here it matters. I want to be within 30 feet of that break line. The fish come up, they stage, they feed, and then they go back down. I went to a little bit bigger Z2. I'll quick reel in and show you. Chad's working that smaller one. I'm working this larger one, uh, hoping that uh, I can coax a couple of really big fish. We could sit here and catch two and a half, three pounders, but so far Chad's caught two really nice fish on the smaller bait. So it could be that the you know, it's not a big bait, small bait type thing today. It's just, you know, get it on the clam beds. Once you're on the clam beds, that's really the key. Uh, and those, those uh, smallmouth are looking for uh, gobies and uh, those gobies like hard bottom. That's really something to understand. Once you understand where the gobies are located, you know, the smallmouth will be there. 
or fish. There it is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> One thing you got to do though is back those oh, drag it's a tank. tank. It's a tank. Yeah, another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. you do have to back the drag off. You do. Just and so this that right have... now, guys, if you're watching, spot lock and and coupled with live scope is imperative because what we did was we. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at this yes. slug. <laughs> Great fish. Oh, oh my gosh. This is a tank. <laughs> that is so cool. And I'll yeah, show you that side right over there. Four. Thank you, Tommy Brubaker, for sending me these wonderful Z2s. Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Angler Quest, built with purpose. Traxtech, the ultimate fishing system. Strike King, tie one on. Garmin. We all want to keep moving, and we all need fuel to do it. Now, with the revolutionary Flow Fast system, you can fuel up and keep moving from literally anywhere. Flow Fast will pump or siphon an amazing eight gallons per minute so you can get back to what you do best. To find out more about Flow Fast, go to flowfast.com. Flow Fast, fuel up, keep moving. <laughs> oh. It's probably gonna be a good one too. Oh yeah, it is a good one, I can feel it. Boy. I saw him. He's right there. Ah, you won't. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Guys, this this fishery, Chad, is untapped, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Gosh. These fish haven't seen a lure in maybe six months, maybe a year since we were here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Since we went, and you get on this edge, you see the buoys. If you're just, if you're new to it, you know, this is a tight little edge here that's a neck down. So the red buoy there and the red buoy up there kind of get a visual for where that channel edge is. And all you're trying to do is put your boat right on the edge so the wind's coming across the, the deep channel here so we're just nosing up to where our see right here we've got our uh, live scope set on 40 feet and see the weeds right there on our live scope so we know if we cast more than 15 feet from the boat we'll be past the weeds and into that deeper drop and so that there we go chad's got one hooked up right there and that's literally as easy as it is once you get where the fish are set up that's right it can be cast after cast and and i took i took this principle i fished what i don't know four or five miles down muskinon down that channel Minuskan, yeah and, and i caught fish the entire the entire way there i mean it's just you find the pattern and then you can just you can duplicate it you know throughout the whole river this thing would i mean we could have followed him to Florida he would have never got off <laughs> oh my goodness mine too I needed a pliers yeah, on, on both even... of my fish all right yep that was the baby z2 and I'm on the full C z2 and they're hitting both which tells me they're just they're just hot they're just hot so that cast took me over the weed edge I'm on this edge, so I'm gonna be in deep water here. I'm gonna let it free fall. Once I'm sure we're on bottom, then watch my rod tip. We're just bouncing it. It's almost like just a shiver. Boom! <laughs> As I said, every cast. <laughs> now this isn't a big one either. Oh, come off. But you can see that fish had it. And I probably missed him because he had it so balled up in his mouth that I that I it it stopped me from getting the hook set. But you see that that's a big aggressive bait. I mean, a lot of guys drop shot and go, John, no way. Yeah. Oh yeah, way. Yeah, these fish, 
These fish want this thing. And you're just bouncing this tip, just making it look stupid down there. Like it's a little fish that's hurt and just kind of struggling. You can stop. Sometimes they'll come and slam it when you stop. Spot lock. That's a good one too. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so much fun! <laughs> you see that fish? <laughs> oh my god! I gosh. love it when they show off. This is like a big fish. <laughs> oh my goodness! Look at that fish out there! Wow! Oh, Brett is showing you right now the best of the St. Mary's River. A foggy shoreline, some absolute train wreck. Oh, that's a good oh, fish right there. That that's... Is a, look at that Z2. That is a big chunk. Right there in the mouth. It's about finding edges and hardness on an edge. We can just keep bump up maybe 10, 15 feet up and re-spot lock and then we can cast some more. We're, we're just working the structure slowly. Some just standard sand, but then you'll get those clam beds. You'll get those little rock, rock or rubble beds. And every once in a while I could set this down. I could turn up on this flat and I could grab my swim bait, my 375. I could make a cast or two in there just to see if any fish got by us which they obviously did. And uh, you know, we can catch them right up on the flat as well. Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Polarcraft, the toughest built aluminum boats, bar none. Dreamweaver, home of the revolutionary spin doctor. Lose, feel the difference. Wave Pro, best ride on the water. WavePro high performance boat pedestals eliminate bottoming out and back jarring impacts. Now available the 2.0 version and slider seat hubs. The best in air shock technology provides a controlled return to keep you on your seat. Fast and easy to install with permanent mounts or movable hubs for quick and easy seat placement in 10 to 16 inch models. WavePro high performance boat pedestals best ride on the water online at waveproshock.com. It's a nice one. Craziness. Why would Whoa. anybody? Ooh, what, back how did that reel, happen? Your back reel was off. That's not what we want. No. Oh yeah. Hey, little buddy. Nice fish. Nice fish. Show that. Show that Ned rig off too. Yep. So obviously we're fishing in deeper water. So I've got like a one sixth Ned rig head on there. Yeah, what's really cool about these Ned rigs is obviously I'm trying to imitate crawfish and the way this Ned head works is every time I flip it, it stands up on its end like that. So, and that's what a crawfish will do in its defensive position. So every time I hop it, it goes straight up like that and it just drives them bonkers. I've caught so many fish on this this year. It's just been awesome. That one, I don't even know if it made it to the bottom. <laughs> they think that there's something. He's, nah, I mean, two and a half pounds. Yeah. Yeah, don't break me. So, yeah, kind of what we've really been using, the, the Garmin, I mean, you get on these big waterways and I, I mean. Side I, scan for the clam beds. Yep. Live scope for the break edge. You yeah. see the flash of fish here and there coming through. But I love that, the fact that you've got that foot meter on top, so you know exactly how far from a break edge or a piece of structure you are when you're casting. Right now, we have been using LiveScope more for knowing where we're at in the channel as much as just catching fish that we see in front of us. Exactly. So the first fish we saw right away earlier this morning when we first dropped down, we saw a fish 10 foot away and, and 
and we hooked them. We just lost them, but most of the fish, we don't, we're just fan casting because we know we're in the right area. We don't even have to use it, just get it out there. But when you're searching for the structure, like the side edges of these channels, like clam beds, that's when you're gonna go to the side scan because that side scan is gonna show you that bottom differential that's on the channel edges themselves. So when Chad first started fishing here, he literally would drive his boat for miles down one side of a channel edge and then come down the other side, look, just punching his waypoint when he saw what he knew on his graph showed as a clam bed. That's super important. Once you get those critical spots, then you go back through and fish them. In these channels too, like I'll run seven miles and chart everything and waypoint anything that I think is an irregularity. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a rock. It can just be a two foot depth change for four feet. You know, so like a little channel in any of it. And I'll come back after I waypoint that whole seven miles and I'll fish each one of those spots. And I did that out here and I caught a fish on every single one. Um, so it's just really looking for irregularities. Doesn't necessarily have to be uh, something that is considered structure to us, to a fish that's a big change. When it's third, 20 foot deep and all of a sudden it's 24 foot deep and you got a little road bed in there or something like that and there's fish on all of them. You can only find it with grass. I mean, it would take you a thousand hours to figure this place out, you know, by just happenstance and, and with these grass, you can do it in one day. So I'll spend an entire day just charting stuff and, and waypoint and then I'll come back and fish it that night or, or the next day if I'm out, you know, pre-fishing for a tournament. But, you know, and especially it's a big deal when I take, you know, like my kids out, you know, if I've already got areas that I know fish are at because I've done the work, um, it, I can get them hooked on the sport. <clears throat> and uh, it's just a big time tool having live scope and side scan and, and you know, obviously under, you know, just radar, but um, big deal for us catching more fish. Oh my gosh, Chad. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's a Z2 fish. Holy my goodness. goodness. Wow. <laughs> Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Offshore Tackle Products, Flowfast, world's leading portable fluid transfer system, Drato, catch and release boat system. Make loading and unloading your boat easy with the Dorado Catch and Release Automatic Boat Latch. Load with ease, simply drive on the trailer and the Dorado will automatically latch to your bow eye. A hard plastic liner protects your boat. For launching, back your boat in, pull the release lever and away you go. For roller or bunk trailers, the Dorado is quick and easy to install and works with most V-Hull boats. Spend less time at the landing and more time fishing. The Dorado Catch and Release Automatic Boat Latch, online at doradoproducts.com. The knowledge of the setup is this sucker inhaled it. Do not come off. Yeah, please do not come off. Do not come off. I felt that bite from 100 miles away. Oh my gosh. Oops, sir. Oh, this is a big one. He's big and dark and wants away from my boat. And do not come off. Oh my gosh. Look at this. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> oh, I oh. can't even get this sucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is a monster. Look at that little drop shot hook right in the side. Right there. You're hooked up. Oh, yeah. Little guy. Oh, my it just came gosh. Around. Oh my gosh, look at that one. <laughs> Crazy. So hey guys, today we've been catching a lot of these fish on drop shots and we've been drop shotting with big baits. So this is a full size Zero Z2 and uh, this is the ice color specifically. Now I've been just trying to 
grab one with the straight tail, but it seems like actually the bent tails today have worked pretty good. Now, when you're hooking it on, I just got it on one of these spinning weed, uh, spinning uh, drop shot hooks, so it's got the actual spinner on it so that it helps me. We are in current, so that's gonna be, you know, a little bit of an assistance. Now, I always like to put the belly, you see the shape of it, the belly down. So I'm just hooking right through the snoot so it lays like that and it gives it lots of action. And then I'm also being somewhat aggressive with my cast action as well. In other words, I'm casting it out there and I'm popping this bait. I'm not, you know, sometimes I'll dead stick hold it just tight on the weight, but a lot of times I'm really popping it and then going to the hold position. And it seems like after you pop it pretty good a couple, two, three times and then stop, boom, that's when they're train wrecking it. Try the Zero Z2s in either the baby or the full size as you get later into the year. Now we're fall, you're gonna to wanna to put the babies to the side and put the full size ones on. It's gonna put bigger fish in the boat. This could be a good one. Yep. Hooked very good. Right here, though. Whoa, oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> that, that is that is perfect. We're gonna make a couple more casts because we just got to another spot, but this right here is the type of quality you can get here on the St. Mary's River out of Sault Ste. Marie. Chad, you one of the it. most unsung smallmouth destinations in the Great Lakes. You're missing out. Got to come here, got to do this. Cast in the edges of the channels, Z2s, swim baits, Ned rigs, awesome stuff. Hey, we'll see you next week here on Fisherman's Digest. Closed captioning is brought to you by WavePro. Best ride on the water. Online at waveproshock.com.